by this team, by this Tulsa team. And but you know, there's something about goalkeepers. They get the confidence going. They feel like they can save just about anything. And and boy, Welsh just so impressive this season. 59 saves. So that says it all. His counterpart on the other side, the sophomore and run away. from Madrid. Spain Alex Lopez great with his feet he's very content to play out of the back and we are underway from Hurricane Stadium glad to have you with us here on ESPN plus a very warm welcome wherever you may be joining us from oh, yeah. again the winner of this match well they will be taking on the one seed FIU that'll be game two of our semifinals coming up on Thursday we'll have that for you on ESPN plus SMU the two seed they'll be taking on the winner of the game between South Florida and Charlotte that match already in progress March will be interesting, particularly for the Tigers in the black and blue as the visitor. We mentioned the success that Tulsa's had here at home. You know they're going to want to get off to a quick start. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Tulsa, I mean, it, it, I was I was stunned you know, when you when you look at the numbers, when you look at the stats that the last time they they lost at home was 2019. I mean, that with the pandemic and everything, that seems like an, a, a, an eternity ago. That was their last regular season of home loss in 2019. They fell to Cincinnati. The Bearcats had a one to nothing victory, but in the regular season, they have been stellar here at home. You and I had the opportunity co to speak with Coach McIntosh earlier. When I asked him, I said, is this something you harp on, kind of protecting home field? He goes, no, really, it's not a point of emphasis. It just, it's kind of happened. As you see right there, they have not lost a regular season home game in three years this season. The only blemish, a draw here at home. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I mean, and that's that's another thing. It's not like the, it was a bunch of draws. No, they get wins when they're on their home turf, and obviously that's the name of the game. They really do. Oh, okay. This team, as you see so often at programs, the collegiate, the national, and the international level, it's about getting that kind of culture, and they certainly have it here. This ball over the top and trying to play that one in, in into Takayoshi Wyatt. He's the senior forward from Dallas, Texas, one to keep an eye on. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a really nice player. Good runs from midfield. Take a look at the lineup for the visitors as they will take the goal kick in both these teams. A lot of local talent, a, some international talent, and both a bit of a Spanish flavor to them. Yeah, there's a, there's a Spanish pipeline that is developed with, with both of these teams, and that's something that you, you're starting to see a lot of players from the country of Spain and then also from other European countries, but in particular Spain. Uh, a lot of those players who are developing some of these great Spanish academies getting a chance to come over and okay. play college soccer in the U.S. and get that education as well. We saw that one over the top. The first shot thus far. Let's take a look at the Golden Hurricane roster. You mentioned that Spanish pipeline. Well, they certainly have it. Obviously, the goalkeeper from Madrid. Then you have Sergio Baena, the midfielder, also a Madrileño. You got Torrijos and Facio up top from Valencia and Sevilla, respectively. So I mean, it's, listen. If you're if you're formed in those academies, oh, yeah. you've gotten proper nice. instruction. You're developed, and they add a lot. That's an asset to these two squads. They've had young men coming through the Atlético Madrid, Real Betis, Real, Real Valencia, Sevilla academies. And that's just that's a luxury right there. It really is to have that kind of caliber players. This ball played down. Good ball into space, trying to find something. Ojeda. Lays it back, has a man, the shot, oh, what a save. The best opportunity thus far to Lopez comes up with a huge save for Tulsa. Still danger, again, Ojeda. Looking to serve this one in, headed away. Finally, the danger cleared. Well, it, it's interesting, Kit, this is very similar to how their first meeting started off. I mean, Pem Memphis came storming out of the gates and they had two or three great scoring chances inside the first 10 to 15 minutes and here we go again same story tonight Memphis uh, a really good rip at goal oh, and a nice man. save a fantastic save there from Alex Lopez to keep this one scoreless early on as we take a look at our keys for tonight's matchup well, yeah when we look at Memphis stay com compact and organized in the back against a good Tulsa team a Tulsa team that scores a lot of goals strong in transition that's really the name of the game for Memphis, that counterattacking, that breaking, uh, they want to be able to, to take advantage and, and, and try to and try to make the most of that, and also taking advantage of set pieces on a dead ball opportunity. Do what you can to try to put pressure on the Tulsa goalkeeper. And for the Hurricane, well, you got to, as we were saying, watch out for the Memphis counterattacks. They did a really nice job in their first meeting this year of, of cutting those down, uh, especially in the defensive midfield. Be composed in the final third. You really want 
to have that patience in the final third. Sometimes teams can get impatient when they're in the opponent's half and they, 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 they send a shot toward goal that's nowhere even close. So be patient in that final third. And I really would like to see Malik Henry Scott get more involved in this Tulsa attack. This is a guy who has six goals this season but hasn't scored in, in just about a month. So it's the type of player he's really good with the ball at his feet. Hold up play I like a lot but would like to see him get involved. Would love to see him get a goal and get going for Tulsa. It would be a huge confidence boost for that team especially in this postseason. Henry Scott the junior from Plano there in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Coach McIntosh very he was effusive in his praise. He said, look, he's explosive, he's powerful, he's everything you want. But as you said, he is not flying the back of the net in about a month. They would certainly like to change that. Up with number nine on cue. Here comes Henry Scott, serves it across, just picked out. It's also looking dangerous. Oh, good ball. Chance to serve this one in and head it out wisely and defended. And you go ahead and concede the corner, will the Tigers. Well, that was really nice right there. Good work. There you see. Henry Scott and then an initial clearance. But it was excellent work for Tulsa to circulate that back into the area. Good, good shot. Here it is. Here's another look. And then there's Malik Henry Scott. You see his footwork. Excellent. And then this ball right here, just taking away two defenders whoop, and playing it out wide. Not a bad look. Henry Scott originally looking for Meinhardt, the leading scorer for the Golden Hurricane. Is this well defended, headed out? Tulsa serves it back in and right into the gloves of Welsh. Henry Scott, you know, he's, he's pacey too, right? He's, he's, he's fast, good velocity, good hold up play. And as the coach was saying, very explosive player. Yeah, to your point, one of the keys for Memphis, they're a team that they don't need a lot of possession. They're very adept at turning defense to offense. If they win possession, watch out because you know they are headed forward and they're doing so quickly. Down the line it goes, and again back to Welsh. Excuse me, rather Lopez. He and his counterpart have already gotten a few touches, able to settle in. A clear evening, cool but not cold. Weather, pretty much perfect for an opening round matchup. A yeah, perfect night for soccer. As Sage, one of the captains, another Spaniard. This ball over the top, a bit too far in front of the intended target. Go Trying ahead. to find Mariano yeah. Facio, Facio, the Sevilla, Spain native. You asked coach earlier, you said you have this Spanish pipeline. Is it, is it by design? Is there a good tapas bar somewhere there in, 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 in Tulsa? And, and he kind of laughed and he said, no, it, it just it came about organically. Yeah, organically grew. And, you know, it kind of started with Richland College. They were able to, you know, some, some kids came through there, you know, from Spain via Richland College. And it's kind of factored into the recruiting effort for Coach McIntosh. And it's kind of a, a three-prong uh, approach with the recruiting and the international influence is, is definitely a part of that and the international player you, you want to get your local kids from you know Texas and Oklahoma and then you know also looking to the portal for a potential transfer but the international market and it's not just Tulsa it's not just Memphis it's across the board in college soccer we see a lot of it and coach said uh, ultimately we'd like We've had a third of our kids international, a third of our kids kind of local talent from the Oklahoma, Texas area. There's no trouble here, and about a third from yeah. the rest of the country. And, and you see it, Kit, a lot with, now you start to see it at some parts of, of MLS, like Austin FC, Danny Pereira, who was from Venezuela. He comes, he plays college soccer here in the United States. He's the number one draft pick in the MLS Super Draft, and now he's a starter for Austin FC. Julian Gressel, another one. Won an MLS Cup with Atlanta United. Originally from Germany, played college soccer here in the U.S. So those opportunities exist to come over here. You get a first-class education, and then you also you know you develop as a soccer player, and you maybe you get a chance to to join a league like MLS or the USL Championship or what have you. So those are those are all things available to some of these players, some of these international players coming in. Yeah, right, you are. It's a great opportunity to get a first-class education, as you said, for a lot of these young men. If you're coming through an academy like. Real Betis there in Sevilla, or maybe one like Atletico Madrid. If you're not already maybe picked out for that first team by 16 or 17, exactly, you're gonna look for other options. <laughs> and that one pressed over, massive save. <laughs> Colin Welsh able to get the fingertips to it and had to. What a rip from Tulsa. And who like else? That right there. Alex Meinhard, their leading scorer. Oh, Meinhard just absolutely sends a sizzler toward goal it. and. 
credit to Welsh, 50, 52, extends, parries it over the crossbar, 52, but Meinhardt, you just got a great example right there of the power he possesses. He unleashes a shot from distance. Great save from Welsh. He is a finisher, a clinical Thank one you. at that. The junior from Estonia looking for his coming. ninth goal of the okay. season. I said I just figured it the out as you were walking through the, walking through the corner. Oh, okay, gotcha. Sorry, I'll turn it off in a second. Again, out to Meinhardt, who's not going to be able to get there in time. No way. What a hit from Meinhardt. Just, you know, thinking about it right now and seeing the replay. Holy smokes, that thing was, and it was destined for goal. That was going to go in. That was a really nice save from Welsh. Was indeed just able to get there in the nick of time. Well defended by the Tigers. Able to close down there on Wyatt. Oh, man, man. They will have the throw. Wait, Wyatt, you kind of see it. You've already, we've already seen it already tonight here in these first few minutes. Wyatt is he's, he's creative with his passing. He'll do like a little, a little Takanasso, a little back heel. You know, he'll he likes to to play with some flair. Uh, and a chance here, Tigers having a man off his line. Lopez having to backpedal. And in there in the nick of time, able to clear it away was Fazio. This one eclipsing in the end line. Tigers will have the corner. Well, and this is a big thing we were talking about earlier in our keys to the game, kid. You know, set ball, uh, set pieces, dead ball opportunities for Memphis. They really have to maximize these. And boy, if they can get an early goal here, try to get Tulsa on their heels. They have the goods to do it. They have certainly have the players to do it. Some of those defenders, some of the, you know, the center backs, like a Hayden Anderson, somebody like that, you know, a big tall body who can get in there and thump something in. Tigers two men there. This one over the head of everyone, it appeared. There was one there, but no trouble for Lopez. Looking to get a quick restart. You see, that's just the first corner of the match for the Tigers. Saw Richard Mulrooney looking on, a Memphis native. That's a commonality they have in their men's and women's team. Brooks yeah. Monaghan, the women's head coach, also a Memphis native. Playing down the line, looking for Baena. You know, really credit to the university for doing that, you know, the, to have that local connection be so strong, both in the men's and women's program. It makes a difference. They certainly know that landscape, and obviously you have the international flair, but it certainly helps in local recruiting. Tulsa sending it around. We've already seen them look dangerous. And this shot will never get through. I don't mind that shot, though. I know it's, you know, it's a little bit from distance, and odds are that you're not going to score. But you send something in a low driving shot like that, you don't know what you might get as far as a deflection or any type of weird bounce. Nice touch. Dorijos. Tiger defender will shield him off the ball. Goal kick, the result. You see the speedster there from Valencia. Great touch. Technical player. It'll be Cam Weston, the senior from the Leicester, England. Go ahead and put this one back into play. Just over a quarter under a quarter of an hour, I should say, having elapsed and scoreless here in our first round matchup between the four seed Tulsa and the five seed Memphis. Opportunities for the Tigers have come just like this via some counter attacks and out it goes. It's going to be no, they're going to say last touch by the Tigers. So a goal kick. Memphis thought they had another corner. Yeah, I thought for a second it was a corner too, but referee says no, it's a it's a goal kick. And you know, kid, it's always interesting to see you take another look actually. Okay, yeah, so that's, uh, I think that's the, yeah, that's the right call there. It was last touch from Memphis. But, okay, what's interesting to see, I, I'm always curious to see the how, when you think about the postseason, how teams come into the postseason. Tulsa, tough loss at SMU, 3-2, and then as far as Memphis, a really nice home win against a, a UAB side uh, that had already been eliminated from postseason, but they took care of business, and, it looks like you know, Tulsa is a team that has managed to bounce back and trying to bounce back here. And trying to find something. And again, there's Henry Scott, our player to watch, and he's already making an impact on the near side and then switching to the far, trying to find the best matchup. Yeah, and, and talking with Coach McIntosh, he said, you know, our guys, the, the previous losses that they had this season, they managed to, to bounce back with, with a 3-0 win each time and so they would love nothing more than to, to do that again but that kind of goes to show you the the character of this team the personality that 
you know, one loss doesn't beat them twice. Yeah, you mentioned those losses at FIU. They fell 3 to nothing. He bounced back beating Missouri State 3 0. Then they fell at South Florida 2 to 1. The aforementioned victory over Memphis back on October the 15th. So impressive for a team to respond that way and emphatic victories after just their two losses. Obviously, that one at SMU, a 3 2 loss to wrap up the regular season. Coach hoping his team will respond the way they have in the previous two, coming back with a big win. Hoping to book their spot in the semifinal with a victory here tonight. And for Memphis, you know, you'd like to get a win, but you really like it when it's done with a clean sheet. That gives you a little bit of a boost of confidence. It's also very content to possess. They like to knock around. Be the team who dominates possession. That's not an issue, as we mentioned, for Memphis. They're not a team that really needs a lot of possession to be successful. And that was another one of our key points is just for Tulsa staying patient in that final third. Don't get exasperated. Don't try to force something. You've got the quality to create those chances. You just got to find that one moment to pick the lock. It's a 90 minute game and you keep a team under pressure. Things will start to open up as you get to those latter stages. It's back with the captain again. Sage, another Spaniard trying to find Meinhardt. Little back heel, able to get this one to Torrijos. Torrijos sends this one into the box and unable to locate Wyatt, his intended target. And it will stay with the Golden Hurricane, now at the boots of Edwards. You see, every time Wyatt has it, there's a second defender there immediately as Edwards sends this, punched away by Welsh. Tulsa doing a very good job winning this ball. Fazio steps up. Now Henry Scott and parried away again. A second massive save from Colin Welsh. Boy, what a save from Welsh. Henry Scott trying to get on the score sheet, trying to get that seventh goal of the season. We talked about it earlier. Really nice turn from Henry Scott to, to open up that shot. But Welsh, he is on his game tonight. Two fine saves to open the evening. He was tested early by Meinhard and then just moments ago. Great stop. Tested again, the young man who came in with a 1.2 goals against the average, a save percentage of 76. Five shutouts on the year for the Sunflower State native. But credit to Henry Scott, great turn on the defender, but denied on a really good save. And Arch, you said it, we talked about our players to watch and he was certainly the one. We, we knew he was gonna have to have a big game, knew he was gonna be tested and just over 15 minutes in, already has been twice, but he's come up bases both times. Yeah, and then, and then I mean, that's only going to be, you know, good things for him, good things for Memphis. And you, know, you look at some goalkeepers, just if they, they get a couple of saves under their belt, and then next thing you know, they think they can save anything. Yeah, confidence, one of the keys in any sport, but even more so in goalkeeping. Absolutely. Because you're on that island, and if you're able to come up with a save or two, and as you said, all of a sudden, you are just brimming with confidence, and it's going to take something extraordinary, it appears, to get by Welsh tonight. Lost his footing. I believe that was Cashin. It was indeed Mitchell Cashin, the senior out of College Station, Texas. Throw in Tulsa. Ashton, one of the captains, will take a quick throw. Notorios. Golden no, no Hurricane happy to recycle. Again up with Henry Scott. Now Wyatt. Always drawing at least two defenders. And Edwards just a no poor way. ball Edwards. back down the line. He was trying to get that one to Sage. Oh, that'll drive a coach crazy. That'll drive a coach absolutely crazy, especially when you're deep in the opponent's half and just to give the ball away cheaply. I mean, that's whenever I'm watching a game, that's one of the main things I, I look at is like, you know, wh who are the players who, who take care of the ball, who treat the ball, who don't give away the ball. And when you have a, a cheap giveaway, it just it's it drives the coach nuts. Playing out wide, making a run in by Anna. As it knocked out for the Golden Hurricane throw. See those backs as midfielders, as the fans enjoying themselves this evening at Golden Hurricane Stadium. And 
you're a Tulsa fan, you've had a lot to enjoy at home this season, and well, not just this season, the last three years. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, that's that's the place to be on campus. You know, if you you show up here to watch Golden Hurricane men's soccer, chances are, um, at the very least, they're going to come away with a draw. Yep, come away with it, definitely come away with at least a point, and most likely. Most likely the full points, most likely with a win. Meinhardt, a little stutter around the defender, trying to cut in. Little hand fighting, and that ball again, Welsh there. The Tigers again to simply have to send it out for the oh, throw. And Meinhardt, he's just such a handful. I mean, just a, a nice little change of pace, change of velocity, able to get past the defender. He's just nice, nice player. Dashin sends one in, not finding anyone clad in white. Back to Cashin. Trying to find space to serve another ball. This ball better oh. had Wyatt. Wyatt just couldn't put it on frame. Well, you like the aggressiveness there from Wyatt. Memphis Tough little clash there with the defender, but Wyatt sailing in, trying to get his head on it into that, sneaking inside that far post. Wyatt right doing there. it. Yeah, as you, you saw it right there over Hayden Anderson, the senior out of Greenville, South Carolina. Transfer from South Carolina upstate. Wide a handful. Yeah, he's. I mean, on the he's good in the air. He's good on the ground, and he's just uh, he's kind of a defender's headache. Seems like we've said that about a few of the Golden Hurricane players. That's right. But still, scoreless. Just about halfway through the opening 45. It's also the best opportunities. Two two shots and two masterful saves from Colin Welsh. And I think if you're Memphis coach Richard Mulrooney, I mean, you're happy with how things are going. Obviously, it's still 0-0, and the way your goalkeeper has responded, making a couple of really nice saves, and kind of, you know, <laughs> for lack of a, of a better term, you know, weathering the storm against the hurricane. I think that's an apt analogy, considering. <laughs> Fortunately, the forecast for tonight is clear. Do not anticipate any inclement weather. For that, we are thankful. Here comes Cashin again. Trying to work around the defender, able to get just a step, and then great recovery. No, Cashin still with it. Now Meinhardt trying to put it on the right. Gets a shot off and finds the back of the net. Put it on a dime. Somehow, Meinhardt finds the opener. This is fantastic from Meinhardt. He gets the ball. He's able to ward off a defender, makes a move, and it's a great, great finish. He knows exactly where he's going with it. He knows exactly where he has to put it to beat the goalkeeper. But it's the way he creates the space to be able to give himself this scoring opportunity. What? Look at this right here. Uses his body to shield the defender, able to get around, and then, I mean, you just couldn't have asked for a better placement. We said it was going to take something really good to beat Welsh. And he just did it. Meinhardt with the goal. Great, great finish from the Estonian. The junior with his team leading ninth goal of the season. He put that ball centimeters, not inches from the post. And you know, we were when we were speaking with Coach McIntosh, he said Alex Meinhardt is a player who understands movement and space. And that right there, that was the epitome of that. He understood the movement of what he needed to do and the spacing, the space that he had to take that shot and the movement that he needed to make to then be able to avail himself to have that opportunity. What a massive goal there, and Welsh has done his. Well, take a look, Arch. When Tulsa scores first, they are 9-1-1. Yeah, so I wouldn't, I mean, don't make reservations quite yet for the semifinal, but I mean, it's certainly, a, it's a, it's a positive, it's an auspicious sign for Tulsa, no doubt. It is indeed. They are very good when they have a lead early. You get the feeling this Tulsa team will just start to turn the screws a bit more, continue with possession now that they've been able to find that opener. And it's it's critical here for Memphis to, to keep their heads. There's still a really, really long ways to go. There's a lot of soccer left in this game. Just keep their composure. Don't make any silly fouls. And then work your way back into it. Use that transition game to your benefit. And they will have a free kick. Will the Tigers? I mean, they've shown that they can they can create scoring chances. They did in the first meeting, and they did here early on inside the first couple of minutes. So it's just they got to just stay patient, but also stay compact and organized in the back. Don't let Tulsa find a second goal, because then you're really on the ropes. Oh, it's like that Rodriguez Dos Santos, the junior, the sophomore from Rio, I should say, by way of Cypress Ranch High School in Houston. Able to draw the foul. 
And as good as they are playing the counter, every team needs a bit of possession. And so far, possession has been dominated by the Golden Hurricane. That's correct, yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned Rodriguez the, Dos Santos. I, his first name is Lineker. I, I can only assume that he's named after the great English striker, Gary Lineker. That's just, I'm just going to hazard a guess. I don't know that for sure. He's Brazilian, so it's possible if he was Argentine, no way. <laughs> But he's a he's a very big part of this Memphis team. Five goals this season, so they need him to to get involved, no doubt. And Wyatt able to track this one down in bounds and able to get it off the defender to boot wins the corner. That is a play that will not show up, but that is a just typifying play from Taco Wyatt. Yeah, nice play there from Wyatt to to earn the the corner kick opportunity. Takayoshi Wyatt, the senior winning the fifth corner early here for Tulsa. They are dominating the set piece. That was one of our keys for Memphis to have some set piece opportunities thus far, just one. Looking to head this one away and sending it up, but no one for the Tigers in the vicinity. Lopez well out of his box to claim it. Now we're with the boots of Will Edwards, the Jinx Oklahoma products. We mentioned the five Spaniards in the starting lineup. You see some Oklahomans, some Texans as well. That good mix that Coach McIntosh was talking about. And here comes Meinhardt. Keep an eye out. Number 15 able to get by Meinhardt again. Welsh up to it. Yeah, good stop from Welsh. But Meinhardt, he's he's really tormenting this Memphis defense. They're going to have to do have to do something to clamp down on him but it's going to be it's going to be very very difficult good size at five foot eleven moves very well and he understands as you said and coach McIntosh told us earlier he understands oh, space and for a forward where space is always going to be the premium that may be one of their best attributes Tigers able to take this one Anderson moving forward has Ojeda with him Anderson Looking for the return ball, gets nice. it from Ojeda. Aiden Anderson tries to serve this one. It does just pass the head of his intended target. Great ball across. It was just a little high for the header. Tigers turned over. Henry Scott able to get there. Back to Lopez. A better from Memphis. I like that from Memphis, the way they broke right there in transition. Really nice passing, one-two combination there on that left wing. Ball across, just a little high, but you had two runners in the box. A header opportunity was there. And a bright spot, as you said. If not seen a lot of offense from the Tigers. That was a very good opportunity. Really like the one-two game between Anderson and Ojeda down this near touch line. Tigers it appears they will make some substitutes, some substitutions, I should say, so substitutes at the scorer's table given the next opportunity. We have not seen any changes from either side in their starting 11 thus far. All the way back. Bottenberg, freshman from the Utrecht in the Netherlands. Now Edwards, now instead they will go to Meinhardt. Meinhardt, good ball off by Enna. And a clean tackle, says the referee, able to get that ball was West and nicely done from the defender. And yeah, Henry Scott a little slow getting up, but I do think that was, that it was clean. He got the ball first, and so I think that's why you had the referee shake his head as to about the penalty claim. Good to see that Malik Henry Scott now back on his feet and back in the play. This one escorted oh, out into awesome. touch. And the Golden Hurricane taking their time and it'll be Will Edwards back to take the throw. Why not in control of this one? Not to say Memphis hasn't had opportunities, they certainly have, and the last one, the best of the bunch. Yeah, Memphis, they're, they're a fast team. You know, they hit those through balls, and then that's where things start to open up for them. So it's one of those things, Tulsa can't, they can't get too, too lazy or too careless in their passing. Really have to stay focused because one little miscue or one little ball that's maybe not weighted enough, and. 
Memphis can hit you on the break, and the next thing you know, there's an equalizer. So Tulsa has to stay focused as well. Henry Scott, you can see he was looking for it. Said it'll be back to Baena. Now Edwards. Sixteen and a half minutes remaining here in half number one. A spot in the semifinals on the line of the one seed FIU awaits the winner Thursday in Florida. Those semifinals will be played in Miami. SMU is the two seed. They await the winner of the South Florida Charlotte game. That a three six seed matchup already underway. Lots of goals in, in that Charlotte South Florida game from what I understand. McIntosh, again, longtime member of this program as a player and assistant and now head coach, 28 years in fact as the head coach. Had the opportunity to speak with him earlier and it was a pleasure. We really appreciate him taking the time, particularly on game day to speak with us. Is Wyatt trying to find his way through and elect to go back to Sage. Yeah, no doubt, you don't, you don't see that too often, you don't experience that too often so our thanks to coach and we had a nice chat and he was he was very open he answered all of our questions and again on game day no less as Welsh off his line to clear this yeah well off his line he took out a chunk of the turf there as well to come out with Wyatt I don't think he replaced his divot and it appears that the Golden Hurricane will make a change of their own, and they will indeed, and I believe that is going to be Takayoshi Wyatt who comes off. It'll be Luke Jeffess in on in his stead, the junior midfielder out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma. And there you see all the changes. McCallum, Cruz, Christensen, all on for the Tigers. Well, Alberto Cruz, I mean, this is, this is a guy who's really good at scoring goals. He can do it. And Memphis would love to get get him firing. This is uh, he's got several goals to his name this season. Freshman from Madrid, Toby McCallum, the junior from Edinburgh, Scotland. Now under a quarter of an hour remaining here in the first half, Tulsa found the opener courtesy of Alex Meinhard a beautiful shot from outside the box low and hard just inside the far post that's the only time Welsh has been beaten tonight he's come up with two outstanding saves yeah I mean kid easily it could be at the very least two two zero still stuck on one zero because of, of Welsh and now when you got a guy like Cruz in the game a guy who's you know one of your leading goal scorers Try to look, make something happen. See if Cruz can be that spark in offense that the Tigers have been looking for. Baena. That's interesting. Memphis, Throw 11 in different goal scorers this season. So they, it's kind of a little bit more of a spread the wealth uh, mentality from from Memphis. But they, they goes to show you, like, they have guys all across the board capable of finding the back of the net. And conversely, you look at Tulsa, you've got Meinhardt now with nine, Henry Scott with six, but no one else on the team has more than three. Really relying on those big guns. And here comes one of them. Meinhardt is looking for the return ball and couldn't thread the needle to number 15 in white. And now a chance in the counter for Memphis. Great job, Tulsa, getting numbers back quickly enough, able to quell any opportunity for a counterattack. Yeah, that's really, really good from Tulsa. And, and those, you know, those, those midfielders, those offensive midfielders holding mids, they work really, really hard. And when you can cut down those types of transitions from your opponent, when that's their strength, you're going to really put yourself in a good spot. You would guess that that is something Coach McIntosh said to his midfielders, that they really are going to have to put in a shift tonight, particularly with that counterattack that Memphis has, and you saw it in that situation. As soon as they turned the ball over, the men in white were streaming back defensively. Got back very quickly. Sake is like a big part of that as well. I mean, you, you, you have to be strong. You have to intercept the ball. You just have to have a, a, that hard man mentality. Looking over the top, trying to find something via the route one. Baena wrestling. And unable to get by Anderson, well defended by Hayden Anderson. Yeah, really good job from Anderson. That was close by Aina. I thought maybe he was going to have a step on him, but Anderson, some good defending. 
Quick throw into Meinhard. He's looking for his second, couldn't get that through. But turned right back over. You see the Memphis player, who that ball intended for, that was Cruz just saying, settle down a bit now with the opportunity. Chance. Rodriguez Dos Santos, he thought he had Lopez off his line. Well, uh, Rodriguez Dos Santos, he, the, Cruz was there. Cruz was making the run to the box. I was wondering if he was going to try to float it in there. He had two defenders in front of them, so it was always going to be difficult. Here's another look at it right here. But that was a little bit of a miscue, a lapse from the Tulsa defense. They got to avoid that. They want to be able to hold on to this 1-0 lead. But Memphis, they have a player like Cruz up top who can take advantage of any mistake. And interesting you mentioned that because in that first match, even though Tulsa came away with a 3 nothing victory, there were some miscues by the Golden Hurricane. And that's what Coach mentioned to us earlier in our conversation, that they could not have those again tonight. Right. And so you had one example there where just a, a, a misplayed pass and then the ball went right to Cruz. Edwards, Henry Scott. Henry Scott trying to continue the run. But able to get there again. Anderson oh, sends it to touch. Yeah, that's a brave step right there to, to stop Henry Scott. It's an impressive player. Junior again from Plano, Texas. Such an explosive player. Getting a word in our ear that with 18 minutes remaining, in that South Florida game, the Bulls have a lead as that shot from Cashin just off target. So USF rallying down from a 1-0 a deficit. Charlotte Charlotte was first to score in that game, taking a 1-0 lead. So USF showing showing a little bit of uh, showing some character there at home. And the 49ers, the sixth seed, the Bulls the number three seed. We have indeed taken a 2-1 lead with 18 minutes remaining. No way, Keep an eye on that one as the Mustangs of SMU await that winner. FIU, the one seed awaits the winner of our game here in Tulsa. All the way back, Cesar Sancho from Toledo, Spain. Trying to find any space. Tulsa doing a very good job of closing down those passing lanes. And they've won it back. Meinhardt looking for Henry Scott. Oh. And had it taken off his boot. What a tackle from Weston. Great tackle. I mean, because if he doesn't make that tackle, Henry Scott is in all alone on goal. Saw Cam Weston make another tackle like that in the box. Had the intended effect. And that's the type of thing, kid. That can spark a team right here. Let's see if it sparks Memphis into something. Here comes Anderson pressing forward. Anderson gets it back from Rodriguez Dos Santos. Couldn't get it by Sage. Rodriguez Dos Santos able to intercept that one. Memphis looking for a bit of space. They will take a shot. Lopez enough of it. Boy, that was from distance. I thought that was a little oh, bit man, too yeah. far away to take a shot, but he forces the save from Lopez. Memphis. Now playing with some more confidence. They've really gotten the, they've gotten their foot and gotten a foothold of the game. And look at this rip right here. This is from a long ways out, but the ball's dipping. Lopez just wants to make sure and parries the fight. That was Toby McCallum, the junior from Edinburgh. The Scott had time in a room. Why not take a crack? Is Golden Hurricane making a change? Tom Protzek, the sophomore from Germany, comes on. As does Johan Juarez, is the junior from Moore, Oklahoma. And number 13, Johan Juarez for number 20, Alvaro Corrijos. So Meinhard gets a break, as does Alvaro Corrijos. No doubt we will see those men, if not here in the first, certainly in the second. Yeah, I would imagine seven and a half minutes left in this half. That's probably give Meinhard some rest, and then he gets the halftime, and they can come back strong for the second half. Sage is... And center back controls that back line, does number four. See him directing traffic, making sure his teammates are in the proper position. He's got 
looking for that return for Eck Weston there again, and that's going to be a foul on Henry Scott. He and Weston have had a good battle. Boy, they've been battling all nine. Henry Scott is really going at these defenders. He's, you can just tell why he's such a handful. He's been in the mix with so many different chances for Tulsa. And Henry Scott, you know, he's, he can he can smell the goal coming, just hasn't been able to have a chance to, to get it. And so far, the man from Leicester, Cam Weston, has stymied him. Number 12 in black and number nine in white continue to go at it, and certainly one to keep an eye on as this game progresses. Uh, Weston Anderson, I mean, really, that the, the right side of that Tulsa, def or the, the right side, excuse me, the left side of the Tulsa defense have their hands full. Tigers trying to find something. Back it comes, and this shot, Lopez, it had him beat, but it wasn't on target. That was really, really nice. Good build up there from Memphis, and the shot just a hair wide. Really good effort. Lopez, not the tallest of goalkeepers at just five foot ten. Take another look. Just a, a curler, and I think it was, you know, it was, it was gonna, always going to go wide. I don't know if Lopez maybe got a finger on that. No, it's a goal kick, so he didn't. But uh, that was really good from Memphis. I like what I'm seeing here from Memphis here in these last five or ten minutes. They're certainly looking to end this half on a high note. Really much improved from the first half hour where it was the Golden Hurricane dominating possession and shots. Yeah, they were they were kind of pegged back, but now down a goal, it's like okay, now you have to you come out you have to come out of your defensive shell a little bit and we're starting to see some some good football or some good soccer from them. Out with Edwards able to get his pass through. Anderson looking nice for a, Ojeda well weighted Jose Maria Ojeda the sophomore from Katy, Texas. Right on deal on the switch, just just didn't have enough on it. His fellow Texan Cashin happy to take it back. Anderson gives it away. Right at the boots of Jeffis. Jeffis able to continue. You see Tulsa very patient. If it's not there, they will bring it back to retain possession. They're not going to force it. And that's that's the sign of a mature team, a, a team that's that's well trained, that's well practiced. There's no, they're not they're not feeling a sense of urgency, and so they're they're composed. They're gonna wait to find their spot. Jeffis looking through, able to find his target, and that was a dangerous ball sent in from Prozac. I really like the the ball across. You know, first times it, and Henry Scott, he's just a hair late there at that near post. He was looking for number nine, and Colin Welsh just beat him to it in the nick of time. Memphis, again, just that one goal deficit. Can they find the equalizer before half? Still a bit of time. That one, Fascio there. Coach McIntosh says he's the best center back, not in the American, but in the country in his estimation. Yeah, I mean that's that's saying something right there because there there are some good center backs, a lot of good center backs in college soccer here in the U.S. But that's a high praise. Oh, yeah, the senior out of Sevilla came from that Real Betis academy. Feeling he's got a bit of green in his wardrobe. Yeah, sure, some Verde Blanco, as they say. Those are the two teams in Seville, Spain, obviously Sevilla and Betis. Bit of a rivalry they have. <laughs> just a just a bit. Henry Scott at the edge of the 18, trying to find a Prozac. Tulsa. Tulsa right now, three minutes remaining here in the half, trying to find that insurance goal. And how big would that be? Talk about the complexion of this match if they're able to go in two to nothing. Oh yeah, I mean, especially right before halftime, a goal right before halftime, that can be, it's deflating for the team that receives it, but what a boost it would be. For Tulsa, but conversely, the same thing. You know, Memphis, if they can grab a goal here in these final moments before the halftime whistle, even though maybe Tulsa's had the the majority of play, that that would be a boost as well. Pass intercepted. Memphis now a chance. But again, Fazio there, just very well positioned. Now, good job from Fazio. We talk about those Memphis through balls, and there he is right there, intercepting, cutting it down, making sure it doesn't get there. Number 22, Mariano Fazio. 
the feeling he is certainly going to get some looks at the next level, whether those are stateside or back in Spain. And, you know, when you look at MLS, there's so many good center backs that have come from uh, college soccer programs. You know, Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman from Furman. You know, these are these are national team players, and a lot of them, you know, where, where did they come from? Well, they came from college soccer. And it's, it's a really nice history there of producing quality center backs from collegiate soccer programs. Just too far in front of Anderson. Quick throw, Protzek able to look for Baena, but he couldn't get it to Henry Scott. Again, he was trying to find Malik. And he's been their target man, particularly with Meinhard, who came off as a substitute with seven and a half minutes remaining in the half. 190 seconds remaining here. Lopez in no hurry to send this one forward. KG match, kind of what we expected. It took Memphis a while to get into it, but once they have, it has certainly been more even. Yeah, the yeah. most far on level terms here in these final 15 minutes following the, the Tulsa goal. So we've seen a, a brighter Memphis. See if they can bring that version of themselves out when we start the second half as well. You would imagine that would be the case. Is, well, it's very simple. Your, season, your season's on the line tonight. Right. And you know, when you have a guy like Richard Mulrooney as your, as your coach, a guy who's won MLS Cups, who's played on the national team, I mean, those things matter. And, and to have his experience, his wisdom, he can impart to his players, you know, they're not going to be, they'll, they'll be undaunted by the task of, of trying to rally here from a goal down. 14 caps with the U.S. Men's National Team between 2001 and 2004. I already mentioned all of his accolades garnered in oh, MLS. Yeah. And those were some good San Jose yeah. teams that he played on. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The first half That's comes to half. a close, and it is the four seed Tulsa the Golden half. Hurricane Tulsa leading the five seed Memphis Tigers, Tigers one to nothing it at the break. Number 12 is This game kind of hinges, I think, on this next goal. 1-1, and then it's it's game on. It's wide open. But a second goal for Tulsa, that's going to make things incredibly difficult for the Tigers. When your head coach has won the Comeback Player of the Year award in MLS, I think you uh, know a few things about grit and coming back. And that is certainly the case for Memphis. But this first 10 minutes, they are going to be critical. They had opportunities in that final quarter of an hour of half number one. They were able to put Lopez to work but ultimately unable to get anything by the Madrileño in goal for Tulsa. So I'm going to be really curious to see how Memphis come out for this second half. We know what Tulsa's going to do. And here they come with Wyatt again. And Saka Wyatt is one of the trigger men as they will send it to this near side. Cashin serves some good balls in on cue. Meinhardt, second defender there quickly. Meinhard had some space there in the middle of the of the area there. Why it went to the other post, but Meinhard had some space there. He was left alone there by the Memphis defense. Maena dispossessed, but Wyatt right there to take it back. You can see Meinhard raising up his arm. I mean, he's <laughs> he's he, he's always open. A forward, a center forward like that, a good center forward always believes he's open, but he always believes he can he can make the play or score the goal. Fazio unable to get to that one. The Tigers will take it. Out now with Jackson Kim, the Norman, Oklahoma native. Certainly has a contention of friends and family watching him. They've made the trip north here to Tulsa. Now you said that about Meinhardt. It's so indicative of a goal scorer. There, there are no bad shots, and they are always open. That's right, always open, giving the ball. Uh, saying that goal scorers, they are they are born, not made. And there's something to that. If you have the knack, as Wyatt does, able to move forward, you see that stat, Tulsa, they have not lost when leading in half this season. That one draw and seven victories, stat that does not bode well for Memphis. Well, in Tulsa, they do a really nice job of, of for example, Wyatt, like these, these little one-two balls that they play, like to play on the wings, they can spring that winger forward, and that leads to chances. Diana unable to link up with his target. 
But Bayern and White, I mean, those are really, those are two players where they'll just, they'll play a little, just nice little, you know, give and go, if you will, and 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 then try to pump a ball into the middle for, for Meinhardt. Fazio thought about sitting it over the top. We'll like to keep this one on the ground, and Tulsa is there, want to do. Happy to play out of the back. Such a good job finding the space, using the full width allowed. A lot of teams will play to one side or up the spine. Tulsa so good at switching field and finding that off-balance defense. You see some press there from Tulsa, not allowing Memphis to get into their transition game. Using that press. It was Tom Protzak who came on as a substitute in the first half and has got the start here in the second. German put in a good shift. Ojeda. Made some nice plays in the first half. Brandon Brackett there, the Germantown, Tennessee native, and he was looking for Ojeda and able to link up. And all. unfortunately for Memphis, that has too often been the case. We've just seen that final ball not finding yeah. the target. And it's good from Tulsa. It's, it's coming because of some really good defensive work from Tulsa. They're getting back in transition, and when they are back, they're organized, they're maintaining their lines, they're doing a really good job. And no one in black and blue there. Sage happy to take it. Little return ball. Sage looking for Wyatt. And here comes Weston. Cam Weston so impressive defensively in the first half. He may have had a goal saving tackle as he was able to take it off the boots of Henry Scott in the box in half number one. And that was, uh, I mean, that was, and you got you to make sure you, on the, a tackle like that, that it's, that you get it 100% right. If not, it's going to be a penalty the other way. Stolen away. Memphis trying to get numbers All forward. Ball. Chance here for the Tigers. Lopez off his line. A lot of contact. And the referee points to the spot. He does indeed. Lopez will see yellow. And it will be a penalty kick coming for the Tigers. Well, I was curious to see what the color of the card was going to be. I think that's the right call on yellow and it's the right call on a penalty and, and where does it happen kit we talked about just a little lapse a little miscue it happens Tulsa gives the ball away and it allows Memphis to break that is Memphis Tiger soccer right there and they earn the PK it's the right call and here's a chance to equalize beautiful ball played to Alberto Cruz the freshman from Madrid you see the it was Rodrigo Dos Santos who played on the Spaniard and the Lopez. Yeah, and there's the contact. That is Madrileño on Madrileño right there. Both of those young men from the Spanish capital. And now we will see if it is indeed Cruz stepping up to take the penalty that he just won. Yeah, and there was a hand on the a hand on the, the ankle there. And I think that's the, the right call. But it was Will Edwards giving the ball away for Tulsa. And and it just goes back to the whole thing. It just it, one little play, one ball that's just a, a misplayed or lightly weighted. And there you go. Memphis. Five penalty kicks this year. They have made all five. Huge moment. Huge, huge moment. And what a great ball in, too. From Rodrigo Dos Santos to create this chance right here. Alberto Cruz. Ready for the referee's whistle. And Cruz equalizes from the spot. One to one. Memphis turns the penalty into the equalizer. Great, great strike there from Cruz. Lopez guessed right. He had a beat on it, but Cruz, the power, the placement is perfect, and it's 1-1. Memphis are right in it. What a job, and again, take a look at the penalty. So nicely struck, but Arch, as you so correctly said, give credit to Lineka Rodrigo Los Santos, the Brazilian. His through ball made it all happen. It was a great ball, perfect weight on it. It allowed Cruz to get onto the ball, forces the PK, and Cruz clinical from the spot. 1-1, this thing is wide open now. Tulsa had those chances in the first half to maybe tack on another two or three goals. Welsh, the goalkeeper, came up big. And this man right there is chagrined of what he, is what at what he has seen. That look says it all right there from Tom McIntosh. He is 
not happy that this is a 1-1 game. And partner, the next 40 minutes are going to be fun. It's going to be really, really tight, really interesting. And you see it right there. Just when you get into postseason play, just the margins are so fine. They're so thin. You cannot make a mistake. That focus, that concentration has to remain intact. So now it's up to Tulsa to try to take a little bit of a, the attacking impetus right here. We mentioned it in the first half, but it bears repeating. When we spoke with Coach McIntosh of Tulsa earlier today, he said in that first game, even though his team won three to nothing, there were far too many mistakes, miscues. They could not play that same way tonight. And if that's what happens, you make a mistake, they're made to pay. Absolutely. And boy, Memphis taking advantage when they needed to. And it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, Kit, with about their coach Richard Mulrooney, the, who exudes a calm, who exudes patience. And they stayed patient. They waited for their opportunity. They waited for their chance. And they certainly made the most of it. They did indeed. And now all to play oh, for one apiece between Memphis and Tulsa here in Oklahoma. Those fans that are so used to seeing their team fine at that opening goal, they can relax. You can start to worry about what your refreshment, your, what your beverage choices are going to be. And right now, they are oh, firmly yeah, focused on the action on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, I think they're a little stunned. I think everybody's a little stunned because they're so used to, to seeing Tulsa here at home, when they, especially when they score first, to really take control and, and put things away. But Memphis showing a great deal of character here. Now we'll see how Tulsa responds being in a position that they're not wholly unaccustomed to being in, but it is certainly not the norm. And here is a man to keep an eye on, Meinhardt. As Cashin, he will play it to Cashin. Cashin now sends it in, headed away. And off the Tigers for a Golden Hurricane throw. Now if you're Tulsa, you, you, have, you have plenty of time as well. There's more than 38 minutes left. You, you don't have to play too quickly. You, don't need to have too much urgency. Gashin, Corrijos is making an overlapping run, but he goes to Meinhardt. Now back with Sage. One further, on to Edwards. Edwards, his through ball, not finding the intended target. Now here come the Tigers. Maybe another counterattack opportunity. Down the line, looking for Cruz. The goal scorer beaten to it. Bottenberg first there. Cruz, who came on as a substitute in the first half. He has been a real spark to this Memphis attack. Meinhardt, good ball. Well-weighted right to Vienna. Now Fazio into the box, and that punched away. Well, I love this from Fazio. He just gets the ball on his left foot and just takes a hard hit at goal. I thought maybe he was going to try to play it across, but no, he goes for the near post to try to beat Welsh. Really good effort. The big center back streaming forward. One of the best in the country. Why not take a crack in Welsh? And Welsh was kind of leaning the other way, and, and, and Fazio noticed that. Saw a slight lean going. Welsh was doing a slight lean to his left. He goes for that near post. Welsh recovers in time to make a really good stop. Looking for the back post. Tigers there to head it away. Out to Edwards. Again, corner kick six to one in favor of the Golden Hurricane. Quick throw into Wyatt. Unable to keep possession. Rodrigo Dos Santos has Cruz. Rodrigo Dos Santos continues to run. That ball just not on target. Yeah, just some miscommunication there. I think Cruz was expecting Dos Santos to, to streak, to flash to the right there. But that was an example right there of the, the transition game from Memphis. But you could hurt, you heard a little bit ago there from coach uh, from the Memphis bench to, to mark up. And they're going to have to do some really good defending here because you know Tulsa is going to be, they're going to start to commit numbers forward to try to, to find that, regain that lead, find that go ahead goal. So you're going to see Tulsa probably you know, trying to mount a little bit more pressure, commit more numbers forward in attack. As you said, there's a lot of time remaining in this one. Is this. A long searching ball down the line. Ultimately, we shepherd it out for a Tigers throw. It's a, a quick tip of the cap to the uh, to the groundskeepers here on the on the campus of Tulsa. Just the field's excellent condition. Really have to give them credit. You've seen sometimes when you're watching some games around college soccer, you see fields that 
maybe aren't in the best, but Tulsa, they do a really nice job their field. But they have indeed. And you, you remember, this is the end of the season. The men have played seven games here at home, and you think about the women as well. Yeah. They probably played six or seven home matches. That is a lot of wear and tear. So as you said so correctly, the grounds crew has done an outstanding job. Cash it. Sends that one in too tall for White. Fazio, he's pressing a lot higher than he was in the first. Rios. You see those numbers for There's a lot of white shirts there in that attacking third. They were a lot more patient before the giving up that equalizer. Now the Golden Hurricane really battling to get it that lead back. Throw it in. And I think this is how this game is going to take shape, at least for right now. You're going to see Memphis is going to be pinned back a little bit. You're going to have Tulsa on the ball more. Question is, will Tulsa, can they find that finishing touch, that pass that picks the lock, or is it going to be a transition? Will we see some counterattacking from the Tigers at least to a second goal? Fazio up to Cashin. Gets it back from Prosek. Nice. Until Cashin, a bit of room. Cashin thought about it, lays it off to Meinhardt. His shot deflected, and it will be a corner for the Golden Hurricane. And Memphis is going to have to close in on him, kid. Meinhardt, he's, just, he's, getting, he's being left with too much time, too much space. They're going to have to close down on him. Mark a little bit tighter. Well, we saw what he could do on the goal. He needs yeah, exactly. little space at all, and that time far too much. He's a guy, he can, he can obviously score inside the box. He can definitely score outside the box. Rios over to take the corner. The out swinger. Good job. Cam Weston there with the header. Out to Rodrigo Dos Santos. And that final ball just a bit lacking. He's looking for Eric Primo. Couldn't link up with a Spaniard. Baena trying to get it up to Wyatt. And well off his line and out of the box as well. Well, he reads the game so well. Goalkeeper coming way off his line like that. It's good. You see Fazio, he thought that was, the flag was going to come up for offside. Not the case. He had stopped it. Cruz had not. Tigers doing a very good job sending it now to Ojeda. Up with Baena after one by Sage. Protzak closed down. West in there. Ojeda ends up with it. A heavy touch gave Wyatt the opportunity. Not finding touch as it instead will find Ojeda for Memphis. Weston switches field. Long searching ball here and far in front of anyone. You know, it's so interesting to see the, the way these teams are playing, kid. And look at Memphis when they're, they're pressing, they're trying to win the ball back. And when they do win the ball back, they want to go so quickly. They want to transition, they want to break. And then Tulsa, they're a little bit more, I guess you could say, deliberate in their approach. If they, when they press or when they do win the ball back, then they want to set up their attack. They don't try to break as quickly, but they can as well as they're trying to here. Wyatt, good through ball from Meinhard. Prosek was calling for it and said it will go to number 15. Meinhard deflected out. Question is, no, it will be a throw. I thought that was the case. Is that one not going over the end line? So simply a long throw coming for the Golden Hurricane. Trying to find someone open in White. Eventually it will be Wyatt. Yeah, White, I think maybe he was looking for a foul there. And it might have been some contact, but it doesn't get a whistle from the referee. Takayoshi Wyatt, the senior from Dallas. Such a talented player, really. One of those guys who versatile, he can score, he can assist. But he's really the midfield maestro, that guy kind of pulling the strings in the middle of the park. Hey, 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 
Masio wisely heads back to Lopez. You got you to be really, you got to be confident about making, playing back that header because anything wayward and it could lead to trouble. Right you are, Meinhardt. Rodrigo's no trouble for Welsh. And with half an hour remaining, our scoreline remains one to one in our men's first round matchup. And I, and I wonder, Kit, when we're going to see Malik Henry Scott. He, he, he did not start the, the second half, and it might be time to. I know he played the entire first half, so Coach McIntosh wanted to give him, a, I know, a little bit of a rest, but it might be time to bring him on because they're kind of missing up. They're missing his hold up play, they're missing just his, his velocity, his skill in the attacking third. Powerful, explosive players, Coach McIntosh told us, and I think you're exactly right that just what he's able to bring, and he's one of those players that so, so much focuses on him, he opens things up for teammates. Especially works so well together with Meinhardt. So it's out of Sancho waiting to send this one back in out of Toledo, Spain, transfer from Presbyterian College. And Arch, I believe your uh, your query has been answered as I believe Mr. Henry Scott will be joining the match at the next opportunity as here comes Wyatt. Wyatt just heavy on that final touch. Oh, oh, and you can tell Wyatt he kind of lets out a, a scream of Disgust, and there he is, right Ask there. Ask, and you shall receive. receive. There's Willie Henry Marcus Scott coming on, so he'll surely, Jackson I'm sure, will be on for these final 30 and minutes. Number nine, Malik Henry Scott. For number 10, but on that last ball right there, wide, he's trying to get that ball across to Meinhardt, and Meinhardt was open, but it was deflected out. And you can tell why it was a little frustrated by that, letting out a, a disgusted screen. Tigers making a change as well as Jackson Kim off and then Marcus Larica, the freshman defender out of Norway on. I, I think the entire European Union is represented. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Except except for except for any of the, the ones from the, the UK, of course. <laughs> I tell you it would be very interesting to be around either one of these locker rooms come the World Cup, which kicks <laughs> off in less than a month. They may be friends right now, but in a month's time that, that may not be the case. Cashin, who will be no doubt rooting on the red, white, and blue, the College Station Texas native. Texas produced some pretty impressive players. A gentleman by the name of Clint Dempsey comes to mind. Breck Shea, a product of College Station. Right you are. Go in, go in. The World Cup, it's just that magical time every four years where we say the world comes together may not quite be the case. We're all watching the same matches, but maybe not rooting for the teams. Baena, his shot deflected by Weston. Cam Weston again steps up big chance here. No one closing down Torrijos, takes a shot. What a save. Colin Welsh there. Well, I really like the movement there. The nice little cutback from Torrijos, sends the shot. Welsh with a really nice save, but some good work to create that. Darch, you mentioned it. We've seen a few times, particularly in the second half, the Tigers slow to close out on Golden Hurricane players outside the 18. Yeah, I mean, they're Tulsa, they're getting their chances. They are getting space. That just needs to be a little bit more, I'd like to see them a little bit more touch tight there in certain instances, but so far they're still 1-1. They're making the right play, getting the right, you know, whether it's just a, an intervention or getting a, a boot on a ball to, to prevent a goal. And, Welsh. Welsh. Welsh playing with a little bit of fire there, right there with needs Meinhardt. Be, yeah, it needs to be careful. I don't know that Coach Moroni will be too thrilled about that one. Talk about goalkeepers and the ability they have with their feet. That was that, that was testing the limits. All goalkeepers think they can play in the field, and all field players think that they can don the gloves. Sage. Such a calming influence on that back line is the captain. Seems to never put a ball wrong, just knows what his team needs at each given time. Cashin. Gotta find Meinhardt, who'd been calling for it for a few seconds. And Meinhardt, I mean, he's not afraid. He'll drop back deep just to receive the ball. He likes to get on the ball, he likes to be on the ball to get that touch, and he'll come back. Not to his own half, per se, but you know, closer to midfield. He's not afraid to do that. Bit too far in front of the intended target. 
As Tulsa will now make a change, and that'll be Paul Rich now, the junior from Christchurch, New Zealand, coming on, making his first appearance of the match. Will be taking the place of Sergio Baena. Again, Cam Weston, he's been the stalwart defensively tonight, has the Englishman. Sage unable to win this, ends up with Larica over the top and pushed away. I don't think Lopez quite knew much about it. Lopez had Ojeda buried down on him, just did the sure thing in that situation. Yeah, you know, when that ball was kind of hoofed upfield there and you saw Lopez, he was backtracking, he wasn't wasn't looking too confident as that ball was coming in. And you could see him there. It's not like he lost it, but he, know he, he knew he wasn't going to be able to, to secure it. So Lopez, he does the right thing and the smart thing and, and then just deflecting it away. This is just the second corner of the match for Memphis. And Memphis, a team that they get a lot more current corner kicks. They had, going into the UAB match, they had 83 on the season. Looking to the far post as Cruz unable to get there. And that's a wasted opportunity right there, a corner kick, and you've got a, a set piece opportunity. And it's it's got to be better than that. It does indeed. You see the Tigers coaching staff, Tony McManus, the associate head coach, Kevin Teo, the assistant. Teo's done a, a really nice job on that Memphis set. Cashin going for a run. Cashin dispossessed. Nice tackle. But unable to get that final ball through. And more often than not for the Tigers, that has been the case. They're able to win it back. They're able to get the build up of that final ball not on target. Yeah, credit to Memphis. They'll get stuck in and they'll, they'll challenge you on a 50 50 ball. Fazio. Well, you can kind of sense a little bit of frustration here from Tulsa. Not traditionally what you see from Fazio playing that route one ball out of the back. Sage looking for it back. Instead, they will go to Wyatt. Wyatt, 50 feet. Wyatt a, takes a shove. Referee says play on. Big contact there. Sent Taco Wyatt to the ground, and you could see his reaction. Uh, fairly incredulous, I would say, and, and I think for me that was a foul. It was outside the area, so it would not have been a penalty, but that was uh, that was a, that was a, a you know borderline call right there. I I, I could have easily seen that have been a foul. Let's take another look. Here's Wyatt trying to get on the end, and uh, I've seen that called as a foul, but the referee says in that instance no. Fazio playing forward, looking for Henry Scott. Able to get that one to his teammate. It was Meinhardt at the top of the 18, the intended target, and it's Rodrigo Dos Santos with it. Down the line looking for a bit of space, and you, I mean, Kit, we're now, we're, we've reached basically the, we're a little bit past midway of this second half, and and things, you know, every single ball, you can tell the, the intensity, the urgency, everything is, there's a lot more emotion. It's It's, it's very tense now as we enter in these these final final phases of the match, knowing that you know, the loser here is going to go home, and one ball can make all the difference. Season on the line. It is very simple. Win and head to the Sunshine State for the semifinal on Thursday against FIU. Lose. Your season comes to a close tonight. Plenty of tension. Lottenberg. Oh, up Edwards looking again for Wyatt. Always dangerous. This is when you, you got to trust your soccer, trust your teammates. Good ball. That came from Sage to Wyatt again. Weston there. Cam Weston has been a stone wall tonight. I mean, what, how good is Weston? Weston, I mean, how many times has he intercepted a ball or just gotten in the way, blocked a pass, whatever it is? And what a terrific ball into Wyatt, but Weston with the defensive answer. 
Utah Valley transfer, Leicester, England native. He has not had a wrong step this evening, has number 12 for the Tigers. Now his opposite number, Cashin, presses forward. Here comes Meinhard, who just a miscommunication offside. as he was in an offside position. That ball is played. And Meinhard has been very quiet here in the first 25 minutes of the second half. Yeah, second half not, not having much of an impact as he did in the first half. And they're right there, offside. It's first time that tonight that he's been offside on a on a play. So you can tell this, this Memphis defense, they are doing what they need to do. Stepping when they need to. Intercepting balls, playing well defensively. They're frustrating this Tulsa attack. Sancho. Getting that big boot out of the back, sends this one. Looking for Cruz. You know, truth be told, Welsh, I mean, hasn't been that busy in this half. No, the best saves he was forced to make all came early in the first half. The, the, the one, the, the Fazio left footer, he had to he had to tip away, but otherwise I think it's his defense has done a solid job. Ojeda working around Edwards. Able to get that one. He's looking for Alberto Cruz, and here comes Malik Henry Scott. Oh, that's good from Henry Scott. Able to keep on it, and foul there. Oh. Going to ground oh, was Brandon Brackett. And Henry Scott you know, uses his body correctly wins the free kick what a smart player just watch this right here he knows he's just shielding away wins the free kick and now it's also with a, a nice chance here but he goes over to take it Fazio and Sage, two of the taller players on the pitch for the Golden Hurricane. And they were looking for number 22. Well, that ball went all the way through without getting a single touch. I'm surprised. I thought somebody would get to it, but nope. But now change is coming with 18 minutes remaining in the match. Golden Hurricane will make two. You see Luke Jeffis coming on. Thomas Wells. We'll join him, Wells, the senior out of Wichita, Kansas. Jeff is a solid player. Been battling a little bit of a hamstring, but he's, he's, a, he's a smart player. Good position play. Tigers make three changes. Christensen, Kim, and Meredith all coming on. Gabriel Christensen, the junior from Denmark. Saw Jackson Kim, the junior from Norman, Oklahoma. And Bryce Meredith, a midfielder from Raleigh, North Carolina. Those two in the starting 11. Well, one of the, the, the key playmakers for this Memphis Tigers team, Rod Lineker, Rodriguez, Dos Santos. Well, there you go, 17 minutes left. It's, these are the guys that you need on the field. You're going to wrap this one up in regulation. You have to get your best 11 out on the pitch. And, I don't think either one of these sides Outside. wants to go to overtime as there is no golden goal. If we indeed go to overtime, it will be two 10-minute periods. We'll play both of them, regardless if either side is able to score. I don't know. Certainly, they would like to avoid penalties in the, the roulette that is the spot kick. Right you are. Although Memphis, six for six now on the season. <laughs> so maybe they, maybe they wouldn't mind that at all. They don't miss from the spot, and that whistle is going to go oh, against Christensen, the, the Dane who'd come back on. Cash and exchanging pleasantries with the Memphis bench. They know it's at stake. Make no mistake about it. There's a lot riding on tonight's match, and you're really starting to see that as we get closer to that 90-minute mark. Looking through, Wells. Wells has a step. Wells still. Welsh almost through the wickets. <laughs> Boy, Welsh, I mean, he lost it just for a second. And somebody had been crashing there at the near post for Tulsa. Maybe they could have poked it in. 
but a good chance there for Tulsa, one of the best of the half. Again, Thomas Wells, the man who got it started. And you see right there, Welsh has been so sure-handed. He was looking for Henry Scott at the back post, but unable to get it past Welsh. It's just a little bit too deep. And good reaction from Welsh. Welsh able to take his heart out of his throat. Final quarter of an hour left in regulation. Do we have a winner in 90? Again, it was Tulsa who found the opener in the 23rd minute of the first half. Alex Meinhardt, a low and a hard, put it to the post. Able to get it by Welsh, and then just four minutes into the second half, visitors equalized. Again, Wells into the box. Wells just wide. Really, really nice turn from Wells, and he's just strung out a little bit too far wide to, to beat Welsh at that near post, but you can see the movement there from Wells on the lead up to that. I really like how he set up that opportunity. Look at that touch. Spins off the defender, and he's got him beat, but Welsh is covering that near post the whole day. Coach McIntosh mentioned how Wells is one of the hardest working players, and you've seen that since he's come on as a substitute, just making things happen. A kid, you know, now fewer than 15 minutes remaining. I, you know, I have the sense there is a goal in this game. There's definitely a winning goal in this game. I just don't know who it's going to come from. Cashin is by and able to poke it away. Now Cashin with it. Has Henry Scott. Couldn't locate. His star forward. And I think Henry Scott, he wanted that higher up. Because I think he had a beat on it. And if he could have played that ball a little bit up, maybe Henry Scott's able to run onto it. But credit this Memphis defense, really led by West, and they've played excellent, especially here in the second half. They certainly have. After conceding that opening goal, it has been a different Tigers team. That is maybe what they needed to kind of get them into this. They've certainly been a lot more proactive. Kim, Jackson Kim deflected by Wells. They're going to say came off the hand of Wells. Coach McIntosh not pleased with the call, but I think that's the right one. And now here you go. We were talking about dead balls and set pieces in the pregame and here's a really good set piece opportunity for Memphis. Another look. And yeah, that got him on right below on the right arm and that leads to that. So Hela there. As was Gabriel Christensen. We will see if it is Ojeda currently standing over it. Number two for the Tigers. Ojeda will look back at Gabriel Christensen. Chances have not been numerous, particularly through the run of play. Could the go ahead come from a set piece? Well, they spoiled their last corner kick, but this is a different free kick opportunity right here. It will be Ojeda to take it. Sends in. It's close. Ends up with Henry Scott. Now Sage surveys up to Baena. Nice little flick back. Baena directing nice traffic. Play. On to Cashin. Triangle passing of this team, just one and two touch. So impressive. Yeah. Good ball. Chance here, Edwards. Sent in and just too tall. Meinhardt unable to get to it, but Baena. Keeps it alive. That one tailing away. Never any trouble for Welsh coming off the boot of Jeffus. I think they'll let Jeffus have that shot, but there was the earlier cross into Meinhardt. It was just over his head. You see the shot kind of slice wide, just like me at the 15th hole. <laughs> my wood. But, but that was... Uh, that cross there on that last buildup from Tulsa, just unable to connect with Meinhardt. Weston trying to rally the troops for a final push. He's done his job tonight. Nobody can dis dispute that.
Diana last to touch it. Ojeda, but no one in black and blue in the vicinity. A lot of contact. Wells ends up with it and gives it right back. Now Christensen able to thread the needle. All the way back, Weston. Serving that one in, had Cruz, couldn't settle it off the chest. And that shot from long range, not on target. Boy, Memphis now that's starting to apply some pressure themselves. Not able to get a, a good shot on target as Meinhardt, he's back into the game. Been off very briefly, and uh, he will take the place of Henry Scott. I'm surprised to see Henry Scott come off. He was, you know, he came on about 30 minutes left in this half, so maybe getting a, a little rest. Well, he and Wyatt both right now on the bench, two of the key players for the Golden Hurricane. Maybe there's some thought, just like knowing that okay, if we might be headed to to extra time. But still 10 minutes left. That's a lot of time. A, little, a lot of time to go still in this half. Glad to have you with us here at beautiful Hurricane Stadium on the campus of Tulsa University here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, alongside Arch Bell. I'm Kit McConico. Very glad to have your company. The opening round matchup of the American Men's Soccer Championship. A spot in the semis to the winner. That'll be Thursday in our game two. The one seed FIU and host awaits the winner of this one. Our first semi, that is already set. The two seed SMU Mustangs will be taking on the three seed South Florida Bulls. That match kickoff at 4 Eastern. Our second semi at 7 Eastern, both on ESPN+. Plus. Hope you'll join us for both of those matches. Christensen sends in. Had Ojeda. Out it comes. Tigers just off the mark. Well, you know, Memphis have been pouncing on these second balls here in this second half. And an attempted clearance right there from the Tulsa defense. High arching cross. Headed back. And this is a clean rip at goal, and it just goes wide. It goes Eric Primo, who had the opportunity. Good effort. Would have liked to have seen him at least get it on target, but boy, what a chance for Memphis. Weston going shoulder to shoulder with Meinhard. He's going to go against Meinhard. Yeah, I, I'd be hard pressed to find a man of the match, a better man of the match right now than Weston. Weston's just been terrific all night. Just about to say, I have not seen him lose in a duel this evening. Yeah, he's been he's been good. He's been precise, assured. Again, Cam Weston, the senior defender out of Leicester, England, transfer from Utah Valley, came through the Mansfield Town system. As a defender, a lot of times we only speak well of you if you're making, or we only speak of you if you're making a mistake, and he has not made a mistake tonight. The reason he has the captain's armband around the left bicep. Up to Cruz. Cruz looking for reinforcements. Has one. Lost his oh. footing. Still able to get it to Christensen. Christensen around cash. And Christensen goes to ground. And referee will say that Christensen. Yep, indeed. Took a second there. But you saw Christensen and uh, the reaction again from Coach McIntosh. Yeah, Christensen goes down in the area, but that's the correct call. That's not a penalty. We saw a penalty earlier again, and it was a clear foul as Lopez came off his line and grabbed the ankle of Alberto Cruz as Cruz had a one-on-one -on -one with the Golden Hurricane goalkeeper and coming from behind, and you would imagine this may see a card cashing down on the pitch. And that is Jackson Kim who is indeed going to join that club. There's the caution to number 15. So and it's another thing, kid. Here, it's important to keep your head. I mean, I know things are emotional. There's a lot of tension in the air. You know, it's everything is every ball, every play is disputed. And Cashin, I know he's kind of been having a little bit of war words with some of the Memphis players, the Memphis bench. But 
you just absolutely have to keep your heads. Make sure you don't get sent off here. That's the last thing you need to have happen to your team. Here it is again, cash in, and you see Kim just a now clear that's, foul. That's a crunching tackle right there. Good to see cash in bounce back up and able to continue. Bottenberg. That was looking in. They were looking for Thomas Wells. Yeah, Meinhardt was right there, just the ball never got to him. Tigers will have the throw. Again, Cruz there. He's been on an island a lot of this second half. Yeah, the typical, typical forward, you know, when it, when it really mattered, he was able to run onto that Lineker Rodriguez de Santos pass and force the penalty and then execute the penalty. So just, it just takes one touch from your center forward to get the job done. Christensen working on and cashing. Christensen tries to serve this in and he'll win the corner. Good from Cashin, really good defending. Bred him the whole way. Just over six minutes remaining in regulation. Still a lot of time. And we find a game winner in the 90. Both sides now with a caution after Kim picked one up just a few moments ago for the Tigers. Coach Mulrooney looking on. Is that ball on the corner area right there? Just maybe barely. Ojeda maybe getting a blade of white <laughs> painted grass. It's also good. But it will matter not as you see Wyatt ready to come back on. Takayoshi Wyatt. See what impact he can make at the end of this one for the Golden Hurricane. Looking up to Edwards, trying to work on Weston, and that is always going to be a tall task. I mean, there's Weston, okay. he's, he's too good. You're not going to beat him like that. Now here's the aforementioned sub of Wyatt, and Alinica Rodriguez dos Santos coming on as well for Memphis. So there you go. You're, you're getting a lot of your starters who are, you know, back here at crunch time. A decisive moment of this game. Watch your your main guys, your protagonists, your stars to, to be out there. And Wyatt is certainly one of them. Without a doubt. Four and a half remaining in regulation. Whistle against the Tigers. Up to Meinhard, who's been very quiet in the second half, and Kim able to knock that one out. Yeah, heavy touch there from Meinhard. Meinhard, not as, you know, I, I, it's been a frustrating second half for him, not as good as we saw him in the first. But he can still be more than capable to, to score the winner here in these final minutes. Fazio. Able to get around. Rich now. Back over with Bottenberg. Every second that ticks off the clock. Intensity amping up just a bit. Cashin serving that one in. Wyatt closest to it. Ojeda. He would have sent that out. He concedes the throw as opposed to the corner. Well, let me tell you something, Ojeda. That was really good off his chest. How many times have we seen a play like that where you're watching a game and then it ends up going off the arm and all of a sudden it's a penalty. So really good from Ojeda to have the, the voice to play that off his chest. Unberg over to Baena looking for a teammate. Goes all the way across the face of goal. And Tulsa, they're really starting to pump some dangerous balls deep into that no, Memphis yeah. area. Memphis will make another change now under three minutes remaining as Hayden Anderson comes back on, the senior defender. Another one of their three, starters Hayden they want Anderson on for this for final push. 15. That's probably a good sub. Kim is on a yellow, so you got to be careful. Don't want Kim getting a second yellow, and then all of a sudden you're down to 10. Time of the essence if we're going to find a winner in the regulation 90. 
Will we be on to overtime again? No golden goal, so we will play both 10-minute overtime periods, regardless if a team scores. All the way back. Very nicely done, Jeffis. Now back, Takayoshi Wyatt. Looking to take his defender for a run. Unable to find any space. Heavy legs from both teams. Fazio. Jeffis looking into Meinhardt. Meinhardt, a bit of space. Welsh there again. Good turn from Meinhardt. Probably his best bit of the second half. Welsh, the reaction, the save. So Welsh. You had three white shirts right there in front of goal, so Welsh absolutely had to make that stop. Sure-handed. He had to be, as you said. Yeah, I mean, that's the winning goal right there, looking at the clock. Now we're down to less than two minutes to go, and Welsh with a really, really good save. Both these teams resigned to head to overtime. Will that be the fate? Coach McIntosh for the Golden Hurricane looking on. Again, his team so good here at home. They had everything they needed. They had the opener. They had the lead at halftime. And when had that, all the momentum. They did. And when that's the case, they are almost unbeatable here at home. But Tigers, they weren't worried about the stats. As you said, it's postseason soccer. You can throw all that out. Still a chance for Memphis, still time. And here come the Tigers. Right there. It was indeed back all the way across face of goal. Oh, what a save. Lopez sticks a paw out. The left hand keeps it out. What a stop from Lopez right there. And now here you go. Here they come, Baena streaking forward. Pass behind him. Both teams with a last gasp, Ojeda. But the flag offside. raised for offside. <laughs> I mean, this last minute, minute and a half, uh, all of a sudden, like, things just broke wide open. But credit to Lopez. What a fine stop there Ten, on that Memphis chance. Nine, really eight, thought that could have been the goal. Seven, Lopez, great save. Six, five, four, Let's see if we can get three, a look at that three, here at some point five, soon. But Lopez, that man right there, making the save. That's going to send this to extra time. And that is indeed where we will head. The sophomore from Madrid, Alex Lopez, keeps this match alive with this beautiful save right here. One to one, 90 minutes in the books. To overtime, we go in Tulsa. He's tired and emotions are running high as well. I mean, you've been. You've been training for this. You're going back to you know, whatever is July, August, and it's in the hot sun and everything, and then through the fall season. So it's a long time these guys have been together, and you don't want it to end tonight. But for one of these teams, that's what happens. And you just want to make sure you just leave everything out there on the field. Start of overtime number one. Two 10-minute periods. Again, no golden goal, no sudden victory, whatever you want to call it. This has been, well, very appropriate that we are headed to overtime as this match has been a back and forth and really what we hoped we would see. This is really the first time we've seen Memphis with a deep throw and Hayden Anderson. This is a weapon for them on, for the Memphis attack or his throw-ins like that. Anderson over the head. Sit back in, oh. flicked on and just passed, but in an offside position. Was well, the Tiger who got a final touch to it? Well, and there you see it with the, with the throw, and he, he throws it deep into the area, and then next thing you know, it, it's in the mixer. The ball's pinballing around. It say offside on that one. Here's another look at it, and you know that's just one of those things, kind of under the radar in soccer. But if you have a guy who can really just whip the ball into the area via the throw-in like that, it's a nice thing to have. I would say so, Sancho, but again, it was offside on that ball was played to him. Tried to flick it on, unable to find Anderson. Golden well, the Hurricane, a quick restart. Again, Meinhardt more than happy to come back in the middle of the park as this ball just out, took his eye off it, did Bottenberg. 
That is a mistake you cannot make, particularly in overtime. Yeah. Just, it was a mistake that led to the Memphis goal. So Tulsa, they want to just got to take care of the ball, stay clean, stay patient. Prado, who's come on as a substitute, a, another Houston native, he concedes the free kick. Prado and Ojeda, high school teammates at Katie Tompkins there, just west of Houston. I think these days you could just say that's Houston. <laughs> Bottenberg. Looking up for Wyatt. Wyatt plays it back to number three. Bottenberg deflected out by Weston. And guess who, right? Weston again. If you had him on your uh, lottery card, your bingo card tonight, I think you've already won. Henry Scott. Lays it back off. And this will go out. Tulsa having a corner. You saw an example right there of just how good Henry Scott is with the hold-up play. Just controls the ball, plays it back out. Almost kind of like what you see in basketball where they feed in the forward and then he goes back out to the guard. Very similar principle. They get a corner kick out of it. Rijos to take it. Good ball, a lot of contact in the six, and that whistle is going to go against <laughs> Tulsa. A little bit of a hobble there. Yeah, and that's Wes Bottenberg, a freshman defender who, out of the Netherlands, trying to shake that one off. It's like it's, you know, on the ankle or something. Weston puts it back into play off of Ojeda and win. Wyatt looking to play quickly. Right, another player they've done a really good job clamping down on is Wyatt. We were speaking about Meinhardt earlier and how he just hasn't had the chances that he usually gets, but Wyatt's another one. In the first half, he was had a little bit more freedom down on that right wing, but he's not getting the space and the time that he was earlier. The Welsh. First to it, a very good job. When you choose to come off your line, there is no going back. And I just, I, I credit Coach Richard Mulroney of Memphis for some of the adjustments that he made during intermission and Memphis, how they've been defensively very sound in the second half and so far here in this overtime. Again, it was really almost when they conceded that opening goal in the 24th minute, and then it, you saw a completely different Tigers team after that point. Yeah. Now Memphis still owning the majority of possession, but you know, Memphis are comfortable where playing this type of game. Wyatt tried to get it back, able to shield Ojeda from it. Taka Wyatt able to find Bottenberg. Bottenberg. Working on West and lays it off. That shot skied high. Torrijos would want that again. Yeah, that's just one. He, I think he just rushes it and sends it to the heavens. The Golden Hurricane making changes. Now we are under the five minute mark here in our first overtime period. And now this is also the time where maybe you get some cramps, some injuries. And both teams now starting to feel it. And Bottenberg off, might have back on. And as you saw just moments ago, that was Jose Maria Ojeda, a sophomore from Katie Tompkins, down on the pitch being attended to. Been a big factor tonight, particularly in offense, pressing forward from the midfield. Get him to those wide areas. Yeah, Ojeda, he'll come off. But yes, yeah, good to see Ojeda walking off on his own power. I think he'll be able to continue. Looks like he will. If he can play, he will certainly be back out there because he knows his team certainly needs him. Clock stopped, 4.50 remaining here in our first overtime. It's one thing about overtime, you, you look at it and you're like, oh, we have two 10-minute periods. 
those 10 minutes go very quickly. Yes, they do. He's trying to get a look at Ojeda on the bench, trying to decipher if he's going to return or not. I'm curious to see that. Tigers, oh, electing to lay it off. Maybe had a chance had he continued the run. Prado, the target. See if he can track this one down in bounds. Able to do so. Recycled by Memphis. Takes a shot deflected by Sage. Still the opportunity for Memphis. Wyatt coming back to defend. He's done it all tonight. Sent in. Came off the head of Fazio, and here comes Tulsa the other way. Henry Scott through the tackle. Just has Weston to beat. Henry Scott, Weston with a sliding tackle to deflect it. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, Weston, incredible. Take a bow, number 12 in black and blue. What a game it has been for Cam Weston. But it's not over yet, and they are going to need him for the next 13 and a half minutes. No trouble, Lopez able to beat Prado there. You know, Kit, earlier on the buildup there from Memphis, the, the big center back, I, I think he should have taken a rip at goalie, but didn't have the, he elected to play out wide, and then on the way back, the transition, I mean, boy, you would have thought that Henry Scott, if he could have just gotten past his last man, he's in on goal, but that last man was Weston, and that's a very tall task. Wyatt will come off, Will Edwards on in his stead. Yeah, normally as a forward, you look up and you have only one defender to beat. You, you start to get a little bit of a grin. You, you light up a bit, but when you look and that defender is Cam Weston, it's uh, maybe not the same reaction. Slightly tougher, but... Good job from Malik Henry Scott to, to get in that position. Just have a chance. Braden Taylor coming on in place of Toby McCallum. There's the confirmation. and he's trying to play quickly unable to get anyone going and again Weston there playing up to Prado back to Lopez under pressure a lot of space here Meinhardt surveys likes to go out wide Cashin Trying to find some space. Orijos, pestered by the defender, goes to ground and wins the free kick. Oh, that's so frustrating because he worked so hard in defense, but concedes the free kick. Really didn't need to. Now an opportunity for Tulsa. Big Bryce Meredith, the 6'5 senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina there. And he just enough contact between he and Alvaro Orijos. Yeah, he just kind of got him on the heel there. And that's a rough call right there, but this is a really good chance now for Tulsa. Meinhardt, who hasn't had, it's been a little bit, hasn't had the influence that maybe he was hoping for in this second half and overtime period. See if he can get something here. Low driving right into the wall. See if the Tigers can spring forward. They have runners. <laughs> it will end up Memphis still with the opportunity, still the chance. Working on two Golden Hurricane defenders and wisely pulling it back. Anderson now sends it in. Got the header. What a ball. Sent in by Hayden Anderson on the money. And Lineker, Rodrigo Dos Santos, the Brazilian, puts the Tigers ahead for the first time tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Jogo Bonito, as the Brazilians say in Portuguese, what a great goal. Great service in from Hayden Anderson and the header. Inch perfect, picture perfect, perfect all around. What a great goal from Memphis. Let's take another look at it. And the cutback pass right there, it's right on Anderson's right foot. Key part there. And Rodriguez dos Santos, he's got the room. They left him alone there. He found the space between the two center backs. And what 
a great header into net. Frustrating for Tulsa. And Kit, another big thing, how did that start? How did that attack start for Memphis? It started on the Tulsa free kick that was on the ground, went right into the wall. It led to the break, and it leads to the goal. Lindegar Rodriguez, Rodriguez Dos Santos, his sixth goal of the year. That is second on the team and his biggest goal of the season by far. With just 70 seconds remaining in the first overtime. Remember, we will play a second 10-minute overtime in its entirety. So still time remaining. And I saw Jovan Prado coming over to his teammates. And I think that's exactly what he was saying is this one isn't done and dusted yet. We need to refocus. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're emotionally, you're on a high, you feel great, you got this go-ahead goal, you've been battling all night, it's postseason conference tournament, but you have to keep your head, you have to keep your emotion, it's not done and dusted. Tulsa's now gonna be pouring numbers forward in hopes of the equalizer, so you have to remember your defensive principles still. Tulsa found the opener in the 25th minute we waited until four minutes into the second half before the equalizer came for Memphis. A penalty kick won by Alberto Cruz. He finished from the spot on the penalty. He won a clinical finish low and hard to the far post. We were unable to find another goal in regulation. And then with just two minutes remaining in the first overtime, Hayden Anderson put it on a dime to the head of Rodriguez Dos Santos. As the first overtime period comes to a close, and Memphis has found the lead two to one. But that's right here, onto his right instead of his left. Touch, and all alone, they left him all alone and got in between the defenders and just redirects the header in. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Credit to Memphis, they've hung tough throughout. Started off a little slow. Now they've got the lead, and they're less than 10 minutes away from a semifinal day. Toby McCollum, the Scott in for Rodriguez Dos Santos, the man who's put the Tigers ahead for the first time. And this ball stays in play, and it will be a throw. And remember, coming into tonight, when the Golden Hurricane had scored first, they had not lost this season. They had only drawn. Everything else was a victory. When they had led it half, it was similar. They had not lost. Memphis looking to change that. Yeah, and then, I mean, we also talked about Tulsa's sparkling record here at home, on home soil. I mean, they, they hardly ever lose here, but yet here they are staring at a 2-1 deficit. So this talks about character and maturity. And, and when we were visiting with Coach McIntosh earlier today, he says, I have a good maturity level on this team. They know how to deal with adversity. Well, they're dealing with a lot of adversity right now. How are they going to handle it? They have nine minutes to pull back the equalizer and send this to penalty kicks. And Memphis, they're going to do everything just to, you know, and it's something like that, just recovering possession. They're going to take their time. No good, Tulsa. Out for a out for a goal kick there. Tulsa will play it quickly, but Memphis, they just they'll they'll be plenty happy to keep on the Tulsa side of the field. Time now, a real factor in this one, already 90 seconds having elapsed in our final overtime period. And the minutes, they go so, they go by so quickly. So Tulsa, they really need to start, kind of get some momentum here, try to create a chance, get something going. Maybe find a, a set piece, maybe you get a corner kick, something. Fazio pressing forward, the big center back. That's the guy who needs the ball. Meinhardt, who's not seen a lot of it through overtime and little of it in the second half. This ball bouncing around. Anderson unable to clear it away. Out it comes and parried over the top. Another masterpiece save from Colin Welsh. Well, that's the chance right there. Second ball, it falls right to Baena. The right footer, Welsh, he was all over it. You see it right here, out to Sergio Baena, Welsh. We saw him with two incredible saves, very similar in the first half, comes up with one here in the second overtime. It was a nicely, nice pass into Baena. Low driving ball still in the box and deflected out. Oh my gosh, how does that not go in? The ball's just bouncing around and it just takes a deflection out. Welsh was, I think he was beaten on that and it just deflects, spins out wide. 
Fans, hearts in their throats. What oh. fingernails they have left, they're sitting on them because there is nothing left to chew. How many times do you see a ball like that? It might take a deflection off a defender and it goes in the goal. This time, it takes a deflection. It spins wide, but what a chance for Tulsa. Just luck there is yep. the shot taken by John Dalby, that freshman from Texas. And kid, that 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 glance, no, I thought it initially glanced off of Weston, but it didn't. But it was it was just it was deep there in front of the in front of the Memphis goal. But going back to that Biana chance, it was a really nice pass into Biana. It's just his right footer saved really nicely by Welsh. Mr. Weston will take as much time as he thinks he can get away with for sending this one back into play. Gamesmanship not lacking at the collegiate level either. You'll see some, some of that. Fazio searches, thought about sending it, now will. Up to Henry Scott, able to get around his man, cuts it back and sent into touch by McCallum. Henry Scott, the target. Sancho first there. Now to Rich now. Here the Tulsa fans get in the box. Get this one in an area. At least you can do something with it. And Memphis wisely. Who else? Hayden Anderson, who's yeah. had a spectacular outing this evening, He's sends here. it up. And you hear away, away, away. They just, you know, Memphis at this point, it's like, okay. You know, we're just, we're fine with just clearing the ball out. Avoiding danger. Nice from Welsh there. He'll take his time. There's no need to rush. There's no need to play in a hurry. Talk about that back line. Anderson, a senior, as is Weston. And you see that senior leadership from them. Meredith, also a senior on the back line. And that's really paying dividends here. And it, it, that really bore out, I thought, in that first half, where they didn't, they didn't get down. They didn't lose their heads after that early Tulsa goal. They stayed in control. They kept their composure. And now they have the lead. They do indeed, an exercise in tenacity, never capitulating, just continuing to battle even when they saw very little of it. Possession dominated by the Golden Hurricane. Going to send this one, Fazio. For Memphis fans, these final five minutes, it's going to be a long five minutes, but I think they're comfortable playing defensively like this. They've been playing very well. And there's a set piece opportunity right there coming. Meredith commits the foul. Thomas Wells, who came on as a substitute in the second half, has put in a very good shift, has number five in white, wins a dangerous free kick. Yeah, Meredith, again, remember he, he committed the foul that led to the free kick that went right into the wall and then eventually led to the Memphis goal. Here he is committing another one. And Meinhardt, no doubt about this one. He is going to go for goal. He's going to take a hard rip at it, no doubt, with that right foot. Well within the range of Meinhardt. Sends this one, and that is bobbled and able to fall on it. Welsh there in the nick of time. Baena was bearing down. It was always going to be difficult just because of how hard Meinhardt hits the ball. But Welsh, he's right on it, makes the save and is able to pounce before Bayana gets to it. And now here come the Tigers, a chance for the insurance goal. Can Memphis find it? And just wide it went. Okay. Oh. That was, oh kid, I thought that was it. I thought that was the third goal for Memphis. I thought they, that was gonna break the camel's back. Nice it. ball in and oh my goodness gracious. That is so close and you see Lopez, he knows he's beat. <laughs> he's just falling back hoping that doesn't hit the back of the net. He spared that one. And again, the Tigers so quickly turning defense to offense. You see how they're able to get numbers up the pitch. And that would have done it. You would imagine it would have been that final nail, but instead there's 325 left. And you have to think the next 4A forward for the or for Tulsa, you're going to see Lopez push up. And if it's a corner kick or a you know, whatever free kick, the goalkeeper's going to be pressing up because they need as many bodies as possible in that attacking third. But for right now, they're not able to do that. Out he comes, McCallum. Good job winning that, settles it. Now up here to the near side, Christensen into the corner. 
Cashin defending Christensen, trying to work around him still. Oh, good job. And that is a heady play from that oh, young yeah. man, yeah. Gabriel Christensen. Give him full credit. Yeah, right there. He's just really, really smart. I saw him start to cut in. I'm like, oh, what's he doing? I was thinking maybe he could just take it over the corner flag and waste some time, but instead he wins the corner kick. Such a smart play, and I'd expect Memphis just to play this short and try to keep the ball. Junior from Denmark, transfer from Coastal Carolina, as is his teammate, Toby McCallum. He'll take this time on this corner kick. Precious seconds going off the scoreboard. Coach McIntosh can only look on. Again, Memphis just four corners tonight. The part where they like to dominate and maybe not the no shot they coach. wanted in that situation coming off the boot of McCallum. Golden Hurricane fans trying to rally the troops here. Anderson able to play it. Came off of Edwards. Again, the one seed FIU awaits the winner. That'll be in our second semifinal on Thursday. Our first is set. It is a 2-3 matchup. SMU, the two seed, will take on the three seed South Florida. That'll be 4 p.m. Eastern, three central kick here on ESPN+. Plus. Wait, Memphis is, they'll just, they'll take this all day long. Throw ins, you know, throw the ball in. More time, just picking away. Tulsa uh, Cruz. But Tulsa has to move quickly. Yeah, I mean, th this is it. I mean, they're probably only going to have one more scoring chance left in this one. It's got to happen now. Lopez, big boot forward. Meredith able to get ahead to it. Baena. In the box. Sent in, trying to head it on. Henry Scott turns, deflected. Cesar Sancho there. Boy, Henry Scott, he's so good, as we mentioned, with that hold-up play, makes the turn, tries to get off that left footer. But as they've done all night, this Memphis back line, they've responded with a block, intervention, whatever it takes to make sure that ball doesn't go in the net. Baena sends it into the mixer, headed through, bounces around, goes up, and here is the whistle. And I believe that was Mariano Fazio, the man who gives the free kick. And that reaction from Meinhardt says it all. Yeah, right there, they, they get Fazio on the foul. But that ball, I think he had two white shirts right there in front of the goal on the loose ball. But the Fazio foul would have negated it. Under a minute remaining. No way to this is it from Tulsa. I mean, kitchen sink time right here. Right now, Tigers just need to send this to touch, and they will have the free kick, and you would imagine that will do it. They went down one to nothing on the road here at Hurricane Stadium where Tulsa rarely, if ever, loses. They found the equalizer four minutes into the second half, a penalty kick from Alberto Cruz, and then two minutes remaining in the first overtime period. Hayden Anderson's perfect Six, service to the head five, of Winnegar Rodriguez four, Dos Santos. Three, and it two, will indeed one. be Memphis headed to Miami on Thursday to take on the one seed. Tigers come back 